Hello and welcome to St Andrew's Cathedral, Sydney. For nearly 500 years, Anglicans have been fed and nourished spiritually with this form of service written by the Archbishop of Canterbury, Thomas Cranmer. The Book of Common Prayer Holy Communion service provides a way for God's people to gather together, hear the Word of God, pray, praise God, and be reminded through the symbolic meal of the Lord's Supper of the assurance that we have in Christ's death. In order for you to share in this way, it's important that you have with you a couple of things. You'll need bread and wine or juice, a Bible, and you might also like to have looked up the appropriate collect or prayer of the day. It's easy to find on the internet by searching for an online copy of the 1662 Book of Common Prayer. The collects, which are short prayers, they are wonderful and they've got an unmatched spiritual depth. I encourage you to become familiar with them. You might like to take a moment now to pause, to gather your thoughts as we come together in this special way. In this Holy Communion service, we proclaim the gospel and remember Jesus' death in the way that he prescribed, eating and remembering with thanksgiving. Let us pray. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive them that trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We continue to pray the collect for purity. Almighty God, 
unto whom all hearts be open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. God spake these words and said, I am the Lord thy God. Thou shalt have none other gods but me. Lord, have mercy upon us and incline our hearts to keep this law. Thou shalt not make to thyself any graven image, nor the likeness of anything that is in heaven above or in the earth beneath or in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down to them nor worship them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God and visit the sins of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me and show mercy unto thousands in them that love me and keep my commandments. Lord, have mercy upon us and incline our hearts to keep this law. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, for the Lord will not hold them guiltless that taketh his name in vain. Lord, have mercy upon us and incline our hearts to keep this law. Remember that thou keep holy the Sabbath day. Six days shalt thou labour and do all that thou hast to do. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt do no manner of work, thou and thy son and thy daughter, thy manservant and thy maidservant, thy cattle and the stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day, wherefore the Lord blessed the seventh day and hallowed it. Lord, have mercy upon us and incline our hearts to keep this law. Honour thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long in the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Lord, have mercy upon us and incline our hearts to keep this law. Thou shalt do no murder. Lord, have mercy upon us and incline our hearts to keep this law. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Lord, have mercy upon us and incline our hearts to keep this law. Thou shalt not steal. Lord, have mercy upon us and incline our hearts to keep this law. Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbour. Lord, have mercy upon us and incline our hearts to keep this law. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbour's house. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbour's wife, nor his servant, nor his maid, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is his. Lord, have mercy upon us and write all these thy laws in our hearts we beseech thee. The Collect for the Queen. Almighty God, whose kingdom is everlasting and power infinite, have mercy upon the whole church and so rule the heart of thy chosen servant, Elizabeth, our Queen and Governor, that she, knowing whose minister she is, may above all things seek thy honour and glory and that we and all her subjects, duly considering whose authority she hath, may faithfully serve, honour, and humbly obey her in thee and for thee, according to thy blessed word and ordinance, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who with thee and the Holy Ghost liveth and reigneth, ever one God, world without end. Amen. Friends, you may like to pray yourself the appointed collect for today, or take this time to pray yourself. This reading is Psalm 8. Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory in the heavens. Through the praise of children and infants, you have established a stronghold against your enemies to silence the foe and the avenger. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have set in place, what is mankind that you are mindful of them? Human beings that you care for them? 
You have made them a little lower than the angels and crowned them with glory and honor. You made them rulers over the works of your hands. You put everything under their feet, all flocks and herds and the animals of the wild, the birds in the sky and the fish in the sea, all that swim the paths of the seas. Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The reading is from John 14. Do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. My Father's house has many rooms. If that were not so, would I have told you that I am going there to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you also may be where I am. You know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where you are going, so how can we know the way? Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you really know me, you will know my Father as well. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said, Lord, show us the Father and that will be enough for us. Jesus answered, don't you know me, Philip, even after I have been among you such a long time? Anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Don't you believe that I am in the Father and that the Father is in me? The words I say to you, I do not speak on my own authority. Rather, it is the Father living in me who is doing his work. Believe me when I say that I am in the Father and the Father is in me, or at least believe on the evidence of the work themselves. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalmist says, man is born to trouble as the sparks fly upwards. The Bible is unflinchingly realistic about the world in which we live. Man is born to trouble as the sparks fly upwards. Few of us could have imagined just a few weeks ago what trouble would engulf us. The COVID-19 pandemic has gripped the world. We look with dismay at the numbers of those impacted, the tens of thousands who've lost their lives, and we grieve with the families in grief. And across Australia, more tens of thousands have lost their jobs. All of us are confined to our homes, health workers, teachers, and other essential service workers from shelf stackers to public servants are stretched to the limit. In so many ways, there are encouragements and neighborliness as well for which we thank God. Is there a word from God in a world of trouble? In the reading we heard from John's gospel, it's the night of Jesus' arrest and he comforts his disciples. Do not let your hearts be troubled. The disciples are troubled. For three years, they've lived with him and learned from him, but now he's told them, one of them is going to betray him. They will all desert him. And he is going. Going to the Father. Going to the cross. And they are troubled. They will see him no more. Through the centuries, Jesus' words in this passage have offered comfort to troubled disciples who cannot see the Lord. Jesus says in this passage, you have a home and I'll take you there. You know the way because I am the way. You know the Father, because you know me. Three words of encouragement to troubled disciples. A home, a way, a Father. Let's think about each of those. You have a home, and I will take you there. Jesus says in verse 2 of John 14, My Father's house has many rooms. If that were not so, would I have told you that I am going there, to prepare a place for you. It's the night of Jesus' arrest. Jesus is going to his death on a cross, but his death prepares a place for those who believe in him. He is talking about heaven, but he's not only talking about heaven. He uses the most familiar of images to speak of life with God. Jesus uses the picture of home to speak of life with God, which he makes possible by his death. Through the death of Jesus, we're forgiven, welcomed into relationship with the Father, adopted as children into God's family. Why is home 
the image that Jesus chooses to speak of life with God. I think it's because home means security, welcome, rest and belonging. Sadly, not all earthly homes are like that and not everyone has an earthly home. In the era of coronavirus, the churches here in the city, along with Anglicare and Mission Australia and Vinnie's and others, are working hard to support the homeless. We are forced to stay at home, but what a privilege to have a home to stay in. Jesus compares life with God to having a welcome in the Father's house. Jesus makes it possible for everyone to know the security of God's love, to experience his rest, to be welcomed into his family. How is this possible? Not anything we do. I go to prepare a place for you, Jesus says. It's his work. He goes to the cross to prepare a place for those who love him. Here is comfort in the midst of trouble for every disciple. We have a home. Perhaps you're not a follower of Jesus already. Becoming a Christian, putting your trust in Jesus is like coming home. Knowing God is like knowing the love of a parent. The place you find when you find your place with God is a familiar place after all, home. Thomas replies to this wonderful promise and assurance of Jesus in exasperation. We don't even know where you're going, so how can we know the way? Which brings on Jesus' second word of encouragement for troubled disciples. You know the way because I am the way. Jesus says in verse six, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. The way. It isn't comfortable to feel that you've lost your way, is it? Nothing worse than you're on the expressway and you suddenly see that giant red sign that says, wrong way, go back. I've heard this from other people. The coronavirus has been like a big red sign for many of us. Suddenly we find ourselves at home. We can't do the things that we automatically did every day. We can't pursue the plans we made. And we're asking ourselves, why was I doing that exactly? Where was that road taking me? When I set out, I had a certain destination in mind, but I seem to have ended up in some other place. If that's your experience, you're not on your own. We need a way. We need a way through life. The truth. Truth matters. And in our culture of many truths and whatever's true for you, uh, we can be skeptical of truth, but it still matters to us. That it matters is as easy to identify as the fact that we hate falsehood. We hate falsehood in public life, in business, in relationships. We're guilty of falsehood from time to time, no doubt. But it repels us. We cannot live without truth. The life. Coronavirus has brought rocketing home to us that life is short and fragile. Mostly we can cope with that as long as life is meaningful. No matter how committed our culture is uh, to the idea that life is just a fluke in the universe, a brute biological fact from nowhere, going nowhere, we want life to mean something. It's enough to love and to be loved, certainly, to have cared for others, to have made something, to have tried and failed is enough. Life without some small measure of achievement and satisfaction in that way would be impossible to bear. Life that merely comprised consumption and reproduction would be profoundly unsatisfying for most of us. Staying at home in isolation is compelling us to answer the question, what is my life for? What gives it meaning? And will death have the final say? Or is there a life that lasts, that gives meaning to the life that is passing away? Does anyone know the way? Has anyone discovered the truth? Has anyone found the life? Jesus offers his disciples himself. I am the way and the truth and the life. It's deeply personal. Jesus does not point the way and say, now walk in that direction. He says, I am the way, trust in me. He does not merely teach the truth and say, learn what I have taught. He says, I am the truth, trust in me. He does not merely say, this is how you should live. He says, I am the life, trust in me. It's personal and it's challenging. No one comes to the Father except through me. 
It's a personal word, but it's an exclusive one. Jesus is unique and indispensable. One of the distinguishing features between the religious and spiritual teachers of the ages and Jesus Christ is that no other teacher makes such extraordinary claims about themselves. No one does that. The Buddha says, you are your own refuge. Moses says, the Lord, our God is one. Muhammad says, worship Allah. Freud says, trust the ego. Marx says, trust the workers. Smith says, trust the market. Only Jesus says, trust in me. I go to the Father to prepare a place for you. No one comes to the Father but through me. This doesn't mean there's no truth to be found anywhere else, but it does mean that while there are many teachers, many role models, many wise sages, though there are many kinds of admirable and inspirational figures, there is only one Saviour, only one beautiful Saviour, one glorious, risen, living Saviour. If you know him, you know he's wonderful and he's the only one. Only one who's gone to prepare a place for those who love him. Only one who has conquered death. Only one who brings us to the Father. Only one who can offer forgiveness and new life. Only one saviour of humankind. If there was no Jesus, there'd be no salvation because no one else is offering it. But if there is one, then we must know him. And Jesus says, you do know him. I am the way and the truth and the life. Do not let your heart be troubled. The third word of encouragement. This time it's Philip who's not satisfied. Lord, show us the Father and that will be enough for us. <laughs> you have to love Philip, really. Come on, Jesus. It's a tough night for us. Just show us God and that will be enough to get us through. We won't ask anything more. Just show us God. To which Jesus replies with what you would have to call uh, heavenly patience. Open your eyes, Philip. That's a paraphrase. You know the Father because you know me. Jesus draws attention to three sources of evidence upon which the disciples may rely. His character, his works, and his words. Verse 9, he says, I've been among you such a long time. Haven't you, haven't you been with me, Philip? Anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. The enemies of Jesus could find nothing with which to charge him. Pilate declared him innocent. Peter said he was without sin. J James, his own brother, confessed him Lord and worshipped him, as did his mother. Character. Of course, it wasn't difficult for them to believe that the works that Jesus did were the works of God. He gave sight to the blind. He gave hearing to the deaf. He produced bread in the wilderness. He mastered the elements. He mastered the spirits. He raised the dead. These were certainly the works of God. Character, works, and words. In verse 10, Jesus says, The words I say to you, I do not speak on my own authority. Rather, it is the Father living in me who is doing his work. All the Gospels record that those who heard Jesus teach were amazed at his words, his authority, his wisdom, the power and beauty of his teaching. If they thought about it, it wasn't hard to believe that the Father was in him and that he was in the Father. And Jesus prepares them. It will be hard to believe that the Father is at work as Jesus goes to the cross. It'll be hard to believe that sin will be defeated and death conquered when Jesus dies on the cross. But to comfort their troubled hearts, Jesus says, the Father is at work in the things that I do and the things that I say. Even in the cross, especially in the cross, the Father is at work. In the bleakest hour the universe has ever seen, Jesus makes known the Father, the God-man who dies for sin, who takes into himself the penalty for all our wrongdoing, that we may be spared. Jesus says, the Father living in me is doing his work. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Let me finish with three ways that trusting in Jesus changes the way uh, his disciples today face the coronavirus. First, we have a home. We know where we belong. We know that we are known and loved and welcomed by God. 
not because we're good or religious or deserving of God's love, but because we put our trust in Jesus, who went to the cross to prepare a place for us, to pay for our sin and offer us forgiveness, to offer us welcome and adoption. So Christians face the uncertainty and difficulty of this time with a security about where our home is and to whom we belong. Second, we know the truth about God and heaven and hell and life and death. We know the way through the bleakest night and the roughest storm. We know the life of God within us and given for us. In every church, certainly in ours, there are those who've lost their jobs, who are uncertain about whether they can stay in Australia, who suffer from physical and mental illness, those who are grieving the loss of loved ones and those who are struggling with addictions and temptations. But we can all say, we know the truth. We know the direction and outcome of our lives. We know the presence and the power and the provision of God because he sent his son. We know all this because of Jesus raised from the dead. And lastly, in the coronavirus era, we know God is our father. We know God not as an idea or a principle or even as a distant king. We know God as father. We've seen Jesus and he's shown us the father. Uh, some skeptics have said this virus will be the end of Christianity because people won't be able to cope with such tragedy in a world that is supposed to be loved by a good and powerful God. In fact, trial and trouble started long before coronavirus. Jesus says on the night of his unjust and gruesome execution, do not let your hearts be troubled. Christianity is completely realistic about this world. It's a world of suffering and it's a world of injustice, not only those things, but including those things. And Christians are not exempt from them any more than Jesus was exempt from trouble and sorrow and injustice. So the virus will not kill faith in Jesus. It may kill superstition. It may kill empty religion. And it may kill atheistic materialism too. But faith in Jesus is not quashed by sorrow and trouble and trial and tears because faith in Jesus is born amidst sorrow and trouble to which Jesus says, you have a place in my father's house and I will take you there. You know the way because I am the way and the truth and the life. You know the father because you know me. Therefore, do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God, trust also in me. Amen. We acknowledge God as Father, Son and Holy Spirit, expressing our trust in what he has done for us. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Ghost of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of the Father and he shall come again with glory to judge both the quick and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord and giver of life, who proceedeth from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spake by the prophets. And I believe one Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the whole state of Christ Church militant here in earth. Almighty and ever living God, who by thy holy apostle has taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all people, we humbly beseech thee most mercifully to accept our alms and oblations and to receive these our prayers, which we offer unto thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, 
unity and concord. And grant that all they who do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. We beseech thee also to save and defend all Christian kings, princes and governors, and especially thy servant Elizabeth, our Queen, that under her we may be godly and quietly governed, and grant unto her whole council and to all that are put in authority under her, our Prime Minister, our Premier and Lord Mayor, that they may truly and impartially administer justice to the punishment of wickedness and vice, and to the maintenance of thy true religion and virtue. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops and curates, that they may both by their life and doctrine set forth thy true and lively word, and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. And to all thy people give thy heavenly grace, and especially to this congregation, that with meek heart and due reverence they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. And we most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succour all those who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. And we also bless thy holy name for all thy servants departed in this life in thy faith and fear, beseeching thee to give us grace so to follow their good examples, that with them we may be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Grant this, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. Ye that do truly and earnestly repent you of your sins and are in love and charity with your neighbours and intend to lead a new life, following the commandments of God and walking from henceforth in his holy ways, Draw near with faith and take this holy sacrament to your comfort and make your humble confession to Almighty God. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all people, we acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed by thought, word and deed against thy divine majesty, provoking most justly thy wrath and indignation against us. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us. The burden of them is intolerable. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. For thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, Forgive us all that is past and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in newness of life to the honour and glory of thy name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all them that with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him, have mercy upon you, pardon, and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what comfortable words our Saviour Christ saith unto all that truly turn to him. Come unto me, all that travail and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. So God loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son to the end that all that believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. This is a true saying and worthy of all to be received, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. And if anyone sins, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the propitiation for our sins. Lift up your hearts, we lift them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is meet and right so to do. It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, almighty, everlasting God. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, 
Heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord Most High. We do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same Lord, whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made there by his one oblation of himself once offered a full, perfect and sufficient sacrifice, oblation and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and did institute and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death until his coming again. Hear us, O merciful Father, we most humbly beseech thee, and grant that we receiving these thy creatures of bread and wine, according to thy Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood, who in the same night that he was betrayed, he took bread, when he had given thanks, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup. When he had given you thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many, for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it, in remembrance of me. Amen. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was given for thee, preserve thy body and soul unto everlasting life. Take and eat this in remembrance that Christ died for thee, and feed on him in thy heart by faith with thanksgiving. The blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was shed for thee, preserve thy body and soul unto everlasting life. Drink this in remembrance that Christ's blood was shed for thee and be thankful. Let us pray. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive them that trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. O Lord and heavenly Father, we, thy humble servants, entirely desire thy fatherly goodness, mercifully to accept this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, most humbly beseeching to grant that by the merits and death of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and all thy whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. And here we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls and bodies, to be a reasonable, holy and lively sacrifice unto thee, humbly beseeching thee that all we who are partakers of this holy communion may be filled with thy grace and heavenly benediction. And although we be unworthy through our manifold sins to offer unto thee any sacrifice, yet we beseech thee to accept this our bounden duty and service, 
not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offences through Jesus Christ, our Lord, by whom and with whom, in the unity of the Holy Ghost, all honour and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. Glory be to God on high, and in earth peace, good will towards all. We praise thee, we bless thee, we worship thee, we glorify thee. We give thanks to thee for thy great glory, O Lord God, heavenly King. God, the Father Almighty, O Lord, the only begotten Son, Jesu Christ, O Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. Thou that sittest at the right hand of God the Father, have mercy upon us. For thou only art holy, thou only art the Lord, thou only, O Christ, with the Holy Ghost, art most high in the glory of God the Father. Amen.
And friends, the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen.